Hallelujah. Can y'all hear me out there? Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, praise team. Amen. I got this new in-ear monitor. Let's see how it works. <laughs> so I won't blast your eardrum out. I won't blast mine out either. Amen. Amen. Well, let's not delay. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we welcome your mighty presence in this place. And Father God, thank you for this opportunity to minister your word. And Father, we pray right now your word will come forth in power and authority, Father, that you will give me utterance to open my mouth boldly and speak as you would want me to speak. Father, I pray your people hear your voice and my voice and that you will use the word this morning to speak into lives, into situations, into circumstances. Father, I ask that it not just be information, but I pray for impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God. So not only be hearers of the word, we can become doers of the word. So Holy Spirit, have your way in this place in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. How I sound out there? I sound, I sound good in my ear. Amen. Amen. We're continuing with the series, uh, The Blessing, Living in the Blessing. This would be part four, The Blessing Connector. Amen. How many people know that um, you don't get something one time? Amen. Just hearing it one time. You needed to hear it again and again and again. You know when a pastor knows that uh, the people got it, when he begins to hear it back from the people. Amen. Amen. So you hear, good to hear Nikki say that uh, during her praise and worship. And then a dear sister, amen, share with me Wednesday uh, after service how she was facing some situations uh, uh, in, in her life. And she remembered the word that we've been preaching. And instead of reacting the way that she normally would, she decided to put the word into operation and be declared, you, you know what, I am blessed. This is not going to work out how it used to because I'm a blessed person. And she noticed a shift, amen, a change of events and things that were, were usually be rough began to be smooth, amen. So listen, it's not just hearing the word, amen. You, you, you got to become a doer of the word, amen. So, so, so there ain't no way we should be talking about blessing and we hear you talking about the curse or losing, or going down, amen, this is meant to change your vocabulary, amen, because unless you change your vocabulary, you will never change your life, you got to understand that man is a creative being, amen, we were designed to create with our words, and if you want to create a new reality, a great reality in your mouth, in your life, it starts with your mouth, amen, you can't talk defeat, and expect victory, amen. You got to begin to change, amen, the way you speak about your life to see the manifestation of the goodness of God begin to show up in your life, amen. Say, say I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, let's do some practice. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed, going I'm blessed in. coming out. I'm say, I'm the head. I'm I am not the tail. I'm say, I'm above. I'm, above. I'm never again beneath. Never again. If God be for me, who can be against me? The rest of my life will be the best of my life. My God. See, a lot of y'all haven't, haven't talked like that, amen, amen. You, you got to start talking like that, amen. And as you begin to talk like that, you'll begin to notice that your mind, your will, and your emotions will begin to shift, amen. A lot of us stay captive, not to the devil, but to our own mind, will, and emotion because we won't open our mouths and break that stuff. Now, go back uh, to Galatians 3.13. Now, listen, if you were in the faith home, amen, I used to teach faith home classes, and uh, a lot of stuff is repetitious, amen. So we, when I do classes, amen, in the faith home, amen, the first thing we start is with our memory verses. We're going to do our, <laughs> yeah, somebody, oh, we're going to repeat our memory verses, amen, and by, by the, the second day, you could feel the agitation, but I don't bow down to agitation, amen. I'm trying to give you victory over your flesh, amen. So we're going to do it anyways, amen. Repeat this after me, amen. And we repeat those memory verses. And then we declare the favor confession over our life, amen. And then what happens is I notice that, that, that you got to train people, amen. Discipleship is about training you, amen. It's not about a, a, a hocus pocus, amen, or doing something one time. It's about incorporating biblical truths in your life that set a pattern in your life that you'll live 
live this for the rest of your life. Amen. Just like Pastor Elliot said, you should know that, you know what, my life is going to work out. Amen. I may go through hell, but I ain't going to stay in hell. Amen. Because I sow seeds. Amen. I love God. I live for God. And I'm doing everything in my power. Amen. To live in this blessing. So my outcome has to work out. Amen. I demand it to work out. Okay, Galatians 3, 13, and 14. I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. It says, yet Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. Say, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I am not under any generational curse. The curse was broken at Calvary. Has set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed, absorbed the curse completely as he became a curse in our place. For it is written, everyone who is hung upon a tree is cursed. Jesus Christ dissolved the curse from our lives so that in him all the blessings of Abraham can be poured out upon Gentiles. And now through faith we receive the promised Holy Spirit who lives in us. Now, now listen, you have to make a decision. That you're gonna you're gonna either gonna believe the word of God or the YouTube preacher. Because there's a lot of stuff out there on curses, but as far as the Christian concerned, Jesus already dealt with the curse. So you got to make a decision right now. Am I going to believe Pastor Tony, who's backing up what he says with the word of God in the New Testament under the new covenant for the new believers, or am I going to believe some hocus pocus? Because what you believe, you give license to operate in your life. Amen. A curse cannot operate in my life because I don't believe I'm under any curse. So a curse can't come into my life. Somebody could try to cook it up in a pot, amen, but I don't believe that, amen. I don't receive that, amen. I'm not looking for that, amen. So there's no fear here to give the enemy license to operate in my life, amen. So when I hear somebody talking about curses or generation curses, it's like, get out of here. I'm redeemed from that. That has no legal right in my life. Amen. And you as the body of Christ, it has no legal right in your life. Now, like I said last week, if you want to repeat old behaviors like you did in your past to get those outcomes, amen, it, will, it can seem like you're in a curse, but it's, it's really your decisions that's causing those outcomes. But as far as God is concerned, he, he already dealt with the curse, amen. It has been broken in Christ Jesus, amen. The devil is under your feet, amen. You are victorious in Christ Jesus as he is, so are we in the world, amen. Come on, come on, we got to walk in our kingdom identity and stop getting harassed and kicked around by the devil and tolerating that some stuff that Jesus defeated at Calvary. I'm not going to tolerate something that Jesus dealt with at Calvary. That would be foolish. So no hocus pocus here. For the born-again Christian, we have been completely delivered from the power of the curse. If you don't know and understand this, the enemy will use your ignorance to get you in fear to try to bring the curse back into your life. As I begin to meditate on what we've been uh, ministering since uh, last year, I realized that this whole battle is about dominion. Let me say it again. The whole battle that we face in this life against the enemy is about uh, the enemy trying to take our dominion, amen. He has a problem with you being the boss. Let me say it again. He has a problem with you being the boss. He has a problem with you being in control in his, of, of your life and him not in control of your life. And he's always looking for a way to get back in control, amen. He, the first thing that he said, heard God say over Adam and Eve, said they're blessed and they have dominion. He wanted that. I got to get that because now God created this, this human, and now this human has dominion over me. And I got to get that dominion back so I can get on top of man. So the battles we face is about dominion, amen. It's about you, not you being on top of the devil. He wants to get on top of you. Look at your name and say, no, I'm on top because I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Amen.
Today I want to talk about how to operate, how to activate the blessing. Pull up uh, Galatians 3.9. It says, Know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Say, I am a faith. I live by faith. I live by faith. Because I live by faith, say it. This is participation. I'm blessed. So when I'm in faith, I'm in blessing. When I'm out of faith, the blessing is not activated. Hmm. So then those that are in faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Say, I'm blessed. Now understand this. Abraham was having a relationship with God before the law was ever given. What got him in like that with God, the Bible says that he believed God. God, I find out, is addicted when we believe him. He loves when we believe him. He loves when we believe his promises over the lies, over the enemy, and over life circumstances. Look what Hebrews 11:6 6 says. The Bible says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. Amen. So God, listen, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. Amen? So, so our lives are supposed to be a life of believing God. What do you think about that situation, Pastor Tom? I'm going to believe God. But you just lost your job. So what? I believe God. His word said he'll supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I stand on the word. I believe God. And God is in heaven like, yes, hallelujah. You hear my son down there? He's not bowing down to circumstances. He exalts in my word above his circumstance. Now he's giving me permission to perform my word in his life. Amen. It's impossible to believe, uh, please God without faith. Amen. That's why you can't walk around looking like the night of the living dead. You got to get on fire for God because if you believe God, it should be evident in your life. Amen. You shouldn't be sad. Amen. You should be happy and joyful because you know who holds your, their, your life in their hands. Amen. Listen, if, if God wanted me to go down, he would have left me with the devil. Amen. But he did not deliver me and set me free. I started thinking about this. Why in the world would I want to be talking about devils anyways and witchcraft and all this foolishness? Foolishness. Before Christ, I was, I was bound by the devil himself. Let me say it again. Before Christ, I was bound by the devil himself. Why would I come become a Christian and be inundated with that foolishness? Jesus didn't save me to, 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 uh, to become an expert on demonology. He, say, he, tra- he saved me to become an expert on righteousness and my position as a son of Jesus Christ. Amen? So the, the, the further you move away from that foolishness and start moving into the realms and the glory of God, the less demonic activity you will experience in your life. Amen? Notice the Bible says that the devil goes around seeking whom he may devour, amen. He can't just jump on anybody, amen, but he is looking for the one that's drifting away from the truth, amen, out there in la-la land getting in your mind, your will, and your emotion, and, you, and he said, oh, look at that guy right there. Oh, he's not in his world. Oh, look at, he's listening to your, your conversations, and he realized you're drifting away, and that's the one he pounces on, amen. Look at your name and say, I will not in 2020. 24, be food for the devil. Listen, you see the stuff going on in Israel. Listen, God is looking for some soldiers. But if we need deliverance, 
and we need uh, somebody always to encourage us, and we caught up in our mind, our will, and our emotion, and what we're going through, how in the world are we going to do anything for the kingdom of God? they still in the hospital, amen? they still recovering. they still in counseling. They're still in there. I can't even put a military a garment on them because they're still in training. So I remember the first revelation of faith I got. Oh my God, the other piece came out. Eh? <laughs> I felt like, feel like somebody pulled that one. But uh, is, it, is it helping? Is it helping? Okay. They, 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 they say I'm loud. And it, it, I can't help that. I got a lion living on the inside of me. Now, me and myself, I'm cool, calm, and collective. Amen. But when the anointing of God begins to show up in my life, amen. I, come on, Kadeem. Blow that thing, man. I can't help it, amen. So we're trying to monitor so we don't blow people's eardrums out. Amen. So my first revelation, I remember I was in, uh, uh, got saved in jail, amen. I was in jail, and there was a man in jail that began to disciple me in the word of God. And I remember one day he seen me, and I was just kind of in my mind, just letting the, my circumstance begin to get to me, and it was just clouding me down. And he, he said, what's wrong with you, Brother Tony? And I said, man, just, man, this is my life, man. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that, man. And he stopped me right there. He said, stop right now. When you gave your life to God, your life is now in the hand of God. You must believe God no matter what. Amen. And your life from now until Jesus takes you home is going to be dictated by your faith in God. You need to believe God right now. This ain't the time to get in doubt and unbelief because you need God to do something awesome uh, for you. Because you're on the bottom, amen. But God is about to do something. I believe this is your launching pad. He didn't say all this. This is me just <laughs> preaching, Amen. <laughs> This is going to be your, 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 your launching pad, amen, into this new life. So it's important, amen, that you don't let the devil trick you and dismay you, that you shake off the, the, those thoughts off your head, amen, and, and get back into faith and believe God, amen, and shake that foolishness off. I was like, hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> and one miracle after another. So that was my introduction to so a man of God challenging me to get out of my emotions and get back into faith. There is one battle you need to be concerned about as a, as a Christian. It's in 1 Timothy 6.12. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life where until you are called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. The battle you are in right now is to get you out of faith. When you get out of faith, you leave the blessing zone. And when you're in faith, you're in the blessing zone. The only way the enemy can defeat you is to get you out of faith. He doesn't want you to believe what the word says about you. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. He wants you to completely forget that and begin to come into, uh, come into your life to begin to conquer your life. Amen? So, so my fight is not with a devil. My fight is to stay in faith. Because because when you're in faith and the devil shows up, I remember what the word says. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And in my name, you shall cast out demons. Amen. See, faith will always take you back to the word. Amen. Faith won't, amen, everything you hear on YouTube, amen, you need to start filtering it through the, the light of the New Testament, amen, and make sure, amen, it lines up with the Word of God. And people are not pulling out stuff from the Old Testament that we are exempt from in the New Testament, amen, and, and, and see, amen, your, yourself, and don't fall for the okey-doke and give the devil license to come into your life, amen. Somebody say, I'm going to stay in faith. That's my fight, Amen. I got to stay in faith. I got to keep believing God. But, but look how long it's been. Don't matter. 
I'm going to stay in faith. Amen. I'm going to believe him today just like I did yesterday. And I'm going to believe him tomorrow just like I did today. I'm not going to back down. I'm going to keep fighting the good fight of faith because when I'm in faith, I am victorious. I got to stay in faith. I got to keep believing God. God, you're going to bring me out. God, you're going to deliver me. God, you're going to set me free. God, you're going to deal with those people at work trying to come against me. God, you're going to work this situation out. God, you did not save me to go down. I don't believe that. I believe I'm called to victory. I'm going to stay in faith. I'm not going to back down. Say it. Say I'm not going to back down. You got to get violent, guys. You got to get mad. I know sometimes you feel like, I ain't got another praise. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. I ain't got another shout. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Amen. Come on. If you if you get up, amen, God will get up with you. Amen. Amen. If you shout, amen, God will be shouting behind you. Amen. If, if you begin to break out, amen, amen, God will begin to break out for you. Amen. Somebody say no chains. Pull up 1 John uh, 5, 4, and 5 in the Passion. Look what the word says. It says, you see, every child of God overcomes the world, for our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Somebody say, I'm a world conqueror. That means anything that comes against your life in this life, you got power to conquer it, to get it under your feet, amen, to to get on top of it, amen, and have a victory flag over that thing that you think is on top of you. When you are in faith, it changes your attitude. It changes your disposition. When you're in faith, you see obstacles as opportunities. You got all this. All right, it's an opportunity for El Shaddai to show up in my life. I'm not going to cry about it. I may cry, but I'm going to dry my tears And I'm going to come to my senses, and I'm going to remember who my father is. I'm going to remember that I am the redeemed of the Lord. I'm going to remember that I am the righteousness of God. I'm going to remember that if God be for me, who in the world can begin to? I'm going to start remembering all this stuff that God has said about my life. Pull up 1 Samuel 17. David was a conqueror. And he wasn't a conqueror, amen, uh, in public only. Let me say it again. He wasn't in, a lot of us like to be conquerors just in public. But in private, amen, what's in public uh, don't match what's in private. But David didn't do it like that. He got it right in private, and then he went public, and what happened in private showed up with in public. I mean, so whatever you, whoever you are in private will eventually be the one that shows up in public. You can try to hide it. You can try to put it down. You can try to put a mask, but eventually the real you is going to show up. That's why my passion is just not for preaching. My, my passion right now is my passion in my private life. If I never grab a mic again, I'll still be a Christian that's on fire for God. I'll still be a Christian that comes to church. I'll still be a Christian that don't back down, amen. I'm not going to lose my fire because it's not just for public. It's my life in private. Who are you in private? When the music stops. When the preaching stops, what is your conversations? Who are you? Do you even know who you are? Go 
Probably. Oh, David. Yeah. My man. My man. Verse 32. He's talking to King Saul. Somebody say faith has a tone. He t- <laughs> the future king telling the king. <laughs> look how he talks to him. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go and fight him. Leaders need people around them that are going to fight. Let me say that again. Leaders need people around them that are going to fight, amen, not need a nurse. Saul is like, man, my whole army is all afraid and scared, and here come this young dude, amen, from the back of the field, Amen, saying that he going to fight for me. One dude. Saul said, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep. That, that's a word right there. See, when they tell you to... To, to uh, calm down, amen. No, persist. You're just a little boy. No, 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 no. Maybe I look like that on the outside, but there's more to me than meets the eye, King Saul. I'm doing stuff you don't even know about. I got some victories under my belt, amen, that wasn't on uh, Netflix, amen, wasn't on Showtime, wasn't on pay-per-view, amen, but it's documented in heaven, Amen. David said, nah, nah, you ain't going to get in my way of my opportunity, King Saul. I can do this. This is my moment. See, he didn't see Goliath as, as a loss. He seen it as a moment for him to demonstrate who he was. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after with a club. Somebody say a weapon. And rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I've done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do this to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. That's the kind of guy you want in your corner. That's the kind of guy you want on your team. Pastor Tone, you don't worry about this. I got this thing. You be encouraged, amen. I am making battle in the realm of the spirit, interceding, amen, taking down principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. You don't have to sit up, amen, at night, amen, go to bed, amen. I'm going to fight and deal with trying to come against you. The Lord who rescued me from the claw of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead. What's the big deal, man? Nobody else is stepping up. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Notice. Notice the attitude of David expressed in his words. Faith has a sound. Does David sound like somebody that came to lose? Do you sound like somebody that come to lose? How do you sound when you come up? How do you sound when you open your mouth? Do you sound like a winner or a loser? It will be displayed in your words. But notice, David wasn't just sitting around. He was seeing the hand of God giving victories in everyday life. You must understand your current season is a preparation room for your next season. Let me say that again. Your current season is a preparation room for your next season. It's also giving you a reflection of how you're going to react in your next season. Don't say you're going to do something next season and you're not doing it this season. If you can't beat the the, the adversity in this season, don't think you're going to beat it at the next season. You're fooling yourself. 
It's not until you master this season that promotion begins to come into your life. When God sees you don't back down, you don't quit, you believe and you stick with the thing. Amen. You swear to your own heart and you change not. You get the job done. Then you're ready for promotion. Don't think you're going to be ready for what God is going to do in your life unless you're living your life with a prophetic eye and you're getting right now. See, this is where people mess up. They don't see prophetically into what season it is right now. They're looking so far away, they're missing, amen, the preparation that's happening in your life right now that's qualifying you for the next season. Somebody say, Lord, give me a prophetic eye. And a prophetic ear to really see life how it is in the spirit. See, I knew the faith home was a preparation season. I know if I couldn't deal with the guy that was my uh, my roommate, I wasn't going to be handle uh, the job or man or life. Amen. You, you, oh my God and my God, I see it now. How I had to learn to walk in love as a student in the faith home, because if I did not temper myself, amen, now there's no way I could be walking in this call because you won't believe, ladies and gentlemen, it'll blow your mind how many opportunities I have to blow it, to blow up, amen, to lose my cool, amen. But God had to temper that, amen, in that season, amen, and get that junk out of me so I don't destroy my witness. But if you don't see the current season, you only see it as a, it's just a waste of time. And you don't see it, it's actually preparation. And God is trying to work stuff out of you. And iron sharpens iron, amen. Somebody say, iron sharpens iron. I realized my my friends were actually the ones that agitated me. That got under my skin, amen. They were really the ones, amen, in the hand of God, amen, began to do, to do character development in my life, to shape me and mold me, amen. They're giving me opportunities to live and walk like Christ. I have to master this. I can't blow it. Now I want to talk about the things that disconnect us from faith. First one, worry. 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 Are you worrying about something? A sense of uneasiness and anxiety about the future. Ultimately, this is grounded in a lack of trust in God and his purposes. Worry is negative meditation on the wrong information. Worry is negative meditation on the wrong information. You're not meditating on the word of God. You're meditating on something that has not even yet happened now. And now it's brought you into this place of worry and anxiety. What are you thinking about when the music stops in your secret place? When you uh, uh, take off the mask, what's going on in your mind? Are you concerned about your future? Are you really trusting God with your future? Pull up Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation. Somebody say everything. Every situation. Every circumstance. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace that which reassures the heart, 
that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Worry is an indicator that there's no prayer. It's hard to worry and be a prayer warrior. Are you a worry warrior, a worry, a worry warrior, or a prayer warrior? People that pray ain't got no time to worry. <laughs> worry. I'm, 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 I'm getting too close to the Lord for that even to get in my mind. I'm feeling the presence of God, the glory of God, the peace of God. Prayer will disconnect your mind and engage your spirit with God and will activate peace over your mind. Somebody say prayer will disconnect your mind and engage your spirit with God. Pull up Matthew 6.25. Matthew Musa. <laughs> the book of Matt. <laughs> Somebody say, here come Jesus. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food? And your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store foods in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown in a fire tomorrow, will he not certainly care for you? Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things. Saying what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Look at your neighbor and say, stop worrying. Go outside. And look at the birds. We got a lot of birds in our yard. Around here, there's a lot of birds. But I never had one come and knock at the door and ask for some food. I don't even see them getting in the garbage. So the Lord is like, I take care of every single bird on the planet Earth. I make sure I'm the one behind feeding them. Jesus didn't come to die for birds, but he came to die for you. And if you will position yourself right and seek the kingdom and not stuff, you'll see that flow that the birds get come into your life. I need to get in the bird, the birds flow. They ain't worried about nothing. Notice they get up in the morning, what do they do? They sing. Now, now listen, my old life, that was the worst sound. When I woke up and I heard the birds singing. Because it put me, the sun is about to come up and I got to deal with the junk I did last night. So now I love it, amen. But back then it was not the sound I, I wanted to hear. It's crazy, right? to deal with this now.
get in the flow. Next one, fear. Fear. Fear will disconnect you from the blessing. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the grief of something bad. A feeling of anxiety concerning the outcome of something or the safety and well-being of someone or something. We call it false evidence appearing real. Somebody say no fear here. Pull up Job 325. Sometimes we wonder how in the world was the enemy allowed to attack Job? I think I found it. He says, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid is come unto me. So Job, with his sacrifices, making sure his kids didn't sin, he was actually operating in fear. The thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and the thing which I was afraid of is now come un- came to me. Fear is the expectation of the devil's worst and not God's best. See, fear puts you in a position where you're expecting the worst, not the best. No, the, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not marked for bad. I'm marked for good. Bad has to fly over my life <laughs> and hit somebody else, amen? But I am, I am marked for good. I'm marked for blessing. So I'm not going to open up the door and believe that something bad is gone. Listen, they may be laying off everybody, but you don't, don't get into fear. I got favor. So God is going to uh, shield me from that, and they're going to find something, some reason that they need to keep me on. God is going to deal with that boss and turn his heart. Now listen to this. If you did get laid off, God got something better for you. Let me say it again. If you did, if that thing did hit you, that means God is done with that and it's time for you to move on to something better. So don't even let that get you into fear. You got to stay. I got to stay in faith because when I'm in faith, I'm connected to the blessing. So that thing hit me. Remember, Joseph wound up in prison. That's a bad thing. But God blessed him in prison. And then prison was the gateway into the blessing. So just because you're blessed, I heard this guy, he, he said this. And sometimes when we preach blessing or prosperity, some Christians have a problem with it. And this is why. They think that because you, you say you blessed, that that means you're exempt from all sufferings. No, I'm not preaching that. I'm preaching that things will happen, but because you're blessed, you're going to come out on top. Job was blessed, but he went through hell. Joseph was blessed, but he went through hell. So, oh my God, I lost it. Freestyle, amen. I'll just go like this, amen. So, all right. <laughs> so just because I preach blessing or prosperity don't mean I'm, 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 I'm canceling out suffering or sacrifice or anything like that, amen. That, that's, Jesus was blessed and went to the cross. <laughs> you're blessed and you're supposed to carry a cross. But just because you got a cross don't mean you're, you're not blessed. Just because you go through a rough spot don't mean you're not blessed. So don't think that I'm contradicting something or I feel guilty about this blessing stuff when people are suffering on the other side of the world. Amen. If that was our case, listen, if we were in China, guess what? The blessing will work in China. (laughs) At whatever level it needs to go, it will work in China, in Africa, in South America. The blessing will work anywhere. It's not based on geographical location. Somebody say excess. Okay, next one, strife. Strife. There's a ministry that we we know, and they have a policy in their ministry. Zero strife. If you get caught sowing discord, starting arguments, bringing division, they fire you. Because they understand the spiritual ramifications of the spirit of strife. 
I want to eradicate strife out of your life. If it goes out of your life, it goes out of the church. Somebody say, no strife. It's time to be peacemakers. Strife means a vigorous or bitter conflict, discord or antagonism, a quarrel, a struggle, or a clash. Somebody say strife. It's one of the devil's main weapons. Look what James 3, 14, and 17 through 17 says. He says, but if you have bitter, envying, and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Can you go back to that first, uh, the first one? Yeah, right there. Look at it. It said, if you have bitter envy. So bitterness is unresolved unforgiveness. And when you're bitter about the past, you see your future through the past. And what it can do, it can begin to make you compare where you're at with somebody else. And that's where the envy comes in. So he said, if you have bitter and envy and strife in your heart, that's not of the truth. That's of the lie. It's against the truth. And strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. Somebody say, I forgive. My heart is clear with every human being on planet Earth. Now, they may have a problem with me, but I ain't got no problem with them. Let me say that again. They may have a problem with me, but I have no problem with them. If you're watching, I love you. We love you. We bless you. I look like going home, getting being all mad and bitter and resentful and a stinking attitude, and I bring that to the dinner table. Man, the Lord told me at the beginning of the year, don't give attention to the squeaky wheel because you're going to miss the good things I'm doing. Somebody say no strife. Notice, it said that every evil work is there. Strife will shut down the work of God and activate the work of the enemy. I've seen strife destroy relationships, marriages, destroy opportunities, and it has the potential, when I read this scripture, to possibly destroy a church. No, I'm not. I'm not. Galatians 5.50. Y'all ain't sucking me into that. Nope. Listen to this. But if you bite and devour one another in bickering and strife, watch out that you along with your entire fellowship are not consumed by one another. Leave that up there for a second. Look at that. If you bite the Holy Spirit on the outside looking in, if you guys bite and devour one another in bickering and strife, contention, discord, arguing, backbiting, tearing each other down, watch out that you, along with your entire fellowship, are not consumed by one another. See, the devil, he just throws a match and wants a fire to start. And then begin to consume things while he's standing on the outside. That's why we got to be quick to forgive, let go, and love and bless. Amen. And guard our hearts with all diligence. Amen. And don't let that junk, that bitterness, that strife get in, in, in your heart. Amen. Listen, I'm quick to forgive. 
Pastor Tony, you heard what they said about you? They got on Facebook. They bashed. I said, before I even see, see it or I happen to see it, I'm like, or I see it, amen. I'm like, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them. I bless them right now. I'm not going to let that harbor. And I'm, I'm, now I'm going to shift my mind. I'm not going to meditate on it. Amen. I'm going to think right. Amen. I'm going to think according to the word of God. Amen. And move on for that thing. And sometimes that can be a battle. Amen. Because the enemy wants to keep you stuck in a fence and stuck in what they did to you. And you got to shake that stuff off. Amen. And wrestle that. They say, no, I got to get that off of me. Amen. I will walk in love. I will bless. Amen. I will stay in the fruit of the spirit. Amen. It's trying to suck us into this, 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 this thing, amen. And I'm telling you, it's, it's brought, this understanding has brought me to another level of peace, amen. Of course, there's noise always on the outside, but I've chosen not to respond to the noise, amen, to focus on the good things of God, amen. I notice that my life is so much full of peace. All right, a couple of more scriptures, Proverbs 10, 12. The Bible says, hatred stirs up strife. But love covers all sins. You're really in hate when you stir up strife. It's not love, but love will cover it. Proverbs 16, 25, a perverse man sows strife, and a whisper separates close friends. Don't let Praise strife. Lord. Amen. Before we close, we always want to ask the question, is there anyone here this morning you have never made that decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you want to make that decision. Anybody here, you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior publicly, amen? Is anybody here, you're, you're not right with God and you want to get right with him. You're far from the Lord and you say, man, I want to rededicate my life back to the Lord. Anybody here? Is everybody right with God? I don't never want to close a service out and, and somebody leave here not right with God. Because, listen, we're in the last of the last days, ladies and gentlemen. And we got to be right with him. Amen. Amen. Have y'all been blessed? Amen. Amen. Say, I'm blessed. blessed. This week, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above. I am never beneath. Everything is going to work out. It's all well with me. It's well with my family. It's well with my soul. It's well with my health. It's well with my finances. It's well in my relationships. It's well on my job. All is well. Amen. Give him a shout. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the service. Father God, I bless your people. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed, church. Hey, I hope that you guys enjoyed that powerful teaching. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button so that you can get more of our content so that we can advance the kingdom of God. Here at Lighthouse Freedom Center, we are people knowing whose they are, walking in who they are, and sharing that freedom with others. God bless you.